For this project, I'm making some 20 by 25 mil stock by table sawing and then planing this larger block rather than cutting down my long stock. I'm using my thin slice jig here, the bolt through the piece of wood, so that I can get consistent widths while we're regularly moving the fence in. Having planed the stock, I'm now putting a 45 degree mitre on the ends of the pieces using a jig on the table saw. <laughs> My apologies, I feel like I've been ill for months. the angle on these pieces in the wrong direction. These are supposed to be angled that way, not that way. Um, I was just scratching my head because I thought this was my only off cut, but it's not. I've got loads of wood, so I'm just going to make some more pieces. Make them right this time. Whilst the table saw allowed me to put a correct angle on these pieces, it was very hard to get them a consistent length and they do need to be an absolutely perfect length for the design to work. So I built a little rig here to attempt to sand them to exactly the right lengths. I'm going to insert splines into the corner joints which means the sensible order of operations here is to build two parts of the frame and then spline those corners and then build the other parts of the frame to connect them together. So this is my spline cutting jig that allows me to clamp the corner where I want it onto this sled and then push it through the table saw. And here I'm attempting to fit my splines into the corners. Um, they were a little snug. Well, I've made the top arches and this project is turning into a bit of a train wreck if I'm honest. Uh, I'm going to finish it because clearly I'm out of practice here a bit. Um, my joints weren't perfectly 45 degrees. I cut the splines but then I didn't fill them very neatly. There's definitely gaps. I've got glue everywhere which I'm about to try and sand off. Um, yeah, not as beautiful and neat and exact as I was hoping but I'll see what I can salvage.
Okay, well it hasn't magically fixed them, but it has certainly uh, hidden a lot of the imperfections. Um, yeah, I feel a lot better, better about that today. I'm going to try that thing I see on uh, these social media videos for making frames and things. They always tape one side, tape it to the other. And that gives you a hinge, I reckon, that rocks up. Kind of does. Interestingly, that's worked a lot better than I thought it would. It's pretty wonky. <laughs> but it's got kind of a wonky charm. Alright, next job is to spline these thicker joints. See if I can do a better job than last time. If you watch the arm on the clamp here, it rotates under vibration and slips across. That could easily have slipped into the blade of the table saw there. I was quite lucky. Now hold on, it's not very even, so I need to cut the same way round. It was that way round before. So in theory, that reverses the offset. in the upper arm. Let's hope it is off-centre but evenly off-centre. No, it's not. Oh well. Just keep practising. Well now I have my spline cuts, uneven as they are, not even equally uneven, I managed to get them both offset by the same amount from the wrong side, despite flipping my jig around halfway through. Now I need to thin this piece of wood, because I've already thinned this one yesterday to be too thin. So now I need to thin a new piece of wood to fit in that slot. Well, in one pass through the planer, that went from much too fat to slightly too thin, but I think it will probably be about salvageable for use as this spline. Now, one thing I learned yesterday is I don't need anything like as much glue in these slots as I was putting in. There's almost all of the slot is filled by the spline. Afternoon, time to trim these splines back. Now I don't need to be too accurate on this, I don't actually need to flush trim them because I'm going to sand it back anyway. So I just need to take it off relatively near so that I'm not sanding forever. Now comes a lot of sanding. Oh, 
right, well, we had a bit of a hiatus yesterday because just as I got to needing to sand this, my trusty disc sander jammed and ate a small internal guide which it then mashed into its innards. Um, I think I stripped it apart and cleaned it out and I'm hoping it's going to work today. I don't think I need to do all that much more sanding though, so um, probably some bits with the palm sander, some bits by hand and we'll be getting there. The most important face is this one, so that's where I'm going to start. One thing that's been on my mind is either chamfering or rounding these bottom corners. Um, and I kind of have to decide now which I'm going to do. Round, chamfer. I'm going to clamp on there the angle that I want to take off. What do you reckon? Do you reckon I can sand, sand that off as a chamfer? I guess we're going to find out. start with this one. I quite like the way that's going but it is rounding off these blocks quite quick so I'm going to use this one again. Okay so my makeshift guide has allowed me to sand that down to a chamfered angle on there which actually looks pretty neat. I'm going to see if I can replicate that now by moving my guide to this side. Where's that one? Weird. front corners are now chamfered and they don't look too bad. I'm going to treat this with a bit of Danish oil. I'm not quite sure what these paler patches are on this wood. I don't know whether that's an artifact from the wood itself or the way I've treated it. Or, yeah, I don't know. The fact it wasn't, it was seasoned as a block and then I've cut it up. You're probably screaming at the video now going, you've missed one, you've missed one. Yeah, well, I've missed more than one. I've missed three here. Gently, if I break a joint now, I will be sad. Okay. I did say about this project earlier on in it, when I was cutting these mitre joints on the corners, that I was going to redesign this. And I have redesigned it. Whether I will build the redesign, I don't know, because having continued to make this for practice, I'm kind of quite happy with it. It's definitely not the lovely angles I was hoping for and the nice tight corners, but I mean, look at those two, they're not, not half bad. It's a shame that the nice ones are on the parts that you can't see. Despite the rickety joints full of wood glue, with those splines in place, I mean, this feels reasonably solid. I can, I can fairly confidently manhandle it. All right, so that's the Danish oil on, which will go off overnight, and then I'll be ready to fit it up with 
some foam and felt. And easy job first, I put some felt feet on the bottom and then I chopped up some of this craft foam to make a buffer here, right up to the top edge there. And on the front face as well, buffer here, right up. And then inside, buffers bottom, front and back. And then making sure to go all the way to the corners, I put that felt inside there. So this is what this has all been about. Um, I've discovered that vinyl records are tricky to handle um, carefully. You need a lot of flat space. If you want to change record, I found I need space for the, the sleeve, the cover, and then the next disc I want to put on. So by building a vertical rack, I can carefully go into the sleeve and then oh sorry into the liner into the sleeve and then change record sideways liner record And voila, job done. Well, thank you for watching. Stay safe.